So, in the last video about the governorships that I would potentially contend for, I did make a minor mistake. I will rectify it here. I do recognize that the New Jersey governorship is actually on an odd year. They vote in 2021 for somebody to take office January of 2022. The other Northeast states have 2022 elections, which means the governorship starts in about three years from now, January of 20. I get that. I don't mean to rush you, Charlie Baker, Gina Raimondo, and Ned Lamont. Hey, Cuomo though, I would like to rush you. You're on your third term and I hope it's your last. And I hope New Yorkers recognize that were it not for Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen's policies, your state would be really on the financial edge too. So what did I omit? Pennsylvania is a Northeast state. I, sure, would happily succeed Tom Wolf, but he seems like he's running things decently. And he's a really good guy that I feel guilty about running against. He is, he's a neat guy. He's a Dartmouth government major, sound familiar? And a guy who turned down a tenure track at Harvard to start a business. Sound familiar? I didn't turn the tenure track down. I just didn't want to go. Now, if Wolf wanted to see a more liberty-minded successor, sure, I'd be in Canada. I, I, I really like Pennsylvania from what I visited, like Philly a lot. I, from afar, really like Pittsburgh. And UPenn is the university that I steer more of my students to, if possible, unless they're science majors. I think UPenn's the best place for liberal arts majors in the country. All right, how about Delaware? Yes, it is in the Northeast if you measure it according to being above the Mason-Dixon line. Mason and Dixon were actually brought in as surveyors mainly to determine what the boundaries of Delaware and Pennsylvania and Maryland would be. So Delaware is above and east of the line. So call it a Northeast state. It's one I know very little about, but I do know this. This is the state that elected Joe Biden to the Senate six times. And I hope that there is, if not remorse, a turnaround this time in the primary. He's your home state boy, but he is a big government guy in the extreme. He's the candidate who not only represents big government, he has run it and helped run it badly in the Obamacare, what I call debacle, and he still doesn't really recognize it. Biden is also the epitome of Democrat condescension, okay? This is, you, you get this from his being blithe, kind of unconcerned with lies, okay? Lies on the campaign trail, exaggerating his doings, and thinking that it doesn't have consequences. Well, ordinary Americans who are lied to are taken aback. In the political realm, we tend to expect lies. And from the Democrat leadership, they've become so routine about big issues. I mean, Trump lies about little things. Democrats have to lie about big things to keep viability. And Democrat lies are really harmful, but the leaders don't seem to recognize it. They seem to be above it. They laud the biggest liar. They basically voted in. They greased the rails for Hillary Clinton, the most masterful liar of our lifetimes. And so, we actually, Bill was more masterful. Hillary was a routine liar. And Joe Biden looks like more of the same. Condescending, disrespectful of voters, and thus, I think, one that Delawareans should turn on. All right, I hope my elaboration has been helpful. If anything, I just gave you more of the Edwin Hawkins singers. Happy New Year. Good night to y'all.